Hello, it's Vince Danzioni here with a financial market update, a few trading ideas, and I'll explain about making money from financial markets. Um, I'm recording this the first couple of days of uh, December 2016. Before I get started, the usual disclaimers, any information or any shares or markets that I show in this update are for information purposes only. If you decide to copy any of these ideas, then of course it's at your own risk. Okay, lots to get through today, so let's get started straight away. This is what I said back on the 22nd of September 2015, um, and you, again, you can Google this, this is all in Google. Um, I came out with an update saying that I expected the Dow to hit 18,500, um, which would have been a record high, by the end of April 2016. Now, uh, as you probably know as I'm recording this, the Dow is sitting at 19,000, so we've actually gone over that. Uh, so it's been a very, very good year for markets. Even with a little bit of choppiness, um, you know, we are sitting at a record all-time high. This is an article which I put out, and again, you can read this online, um, just a few weeks ago. And I'm looking for the Dow to hit 23,000 to 25,000 by the end of the first four years of Trump. Um, and when I put this out, you know, I started buying, the Dow was back at about 18,000, which was October. Now, whatever you think about Trump, maybe he's not your first choice, maybe, um, you know, he's not your cup of tea. There's one thing you have to say. One, you know, he did win it fairly and squarely. Um, and secondly, if you forget the noise, Trump is a businessman. At the end of the day, um, you know, you get past the personality and the loud talk, and I think you've already started to see a little bit of a change intact from the way he actually won the election. Um, and the bottom line, you know, he's a businessman, he wants less government. He's already talking about for every new act that comes out, he wants to repeal so he wants less government and he's also talking about lower tax rates and one of the things that Trump is looking to do uh, which Obama should have really done was allow money to come back to the US at a lower tax rate if you don't know companies like Apple and Microsoft are sitting on billions which are outside the US but they don't want to bring it back to the US because they'll be hit with a fairly high tax rate what Trump is now saying that if you bring that money back into the US, we'll allow you to bring it back in at a lower tax rate. Anyway, you can Google the full article, but overall, um, you know, from a financial perspective, financial markets view, I think Trump's actually going to be quite good for the US markets. And as I say, I'm looking by the time he gets to his, the end of the first term, which is going to be four years uh, from January 2017, we're going to be sitting around 23,000 on the Dow. So this is 25 years of the Dow, um, and as you can see, we're sitting at new all-time highs. It's interesting, you speak to most people, they don't realize how well stocks have done. And I'm talking predominantly about US markets, because they are the main markets that I trade. Of course, you can trade other markets. <clears throat> it doesn't matter where you're based, you know, a lot of people watching this are going to be based in the UK or Europe, tend to gravitate to their home markets. But at the end of the day, you can easily trade US stocks like Apple, Microsoft, Starbucks, McDonald's, you know, multinational names which are listed in the States as easily as you can trade UK stocks. Um, so the Dow is, say, sitting around the 19,000 mark. S&P 500, which is the broader market because it's 500 shares, again, also sitting at a new all-time high. And the NASDAQ 100, which was the index that sort of boomed and busted back in 2000 because of all the high-tech and dot-com shares, is also now sitting around a new all-time high um, as well. And that index is quite concentrated with technology and biotech stocks. Now, although stocks are near a new all-time high, I don't see a lot of bullishness. I don't see a lot of optimism. Um, and Sir John Templeton basically came out with a great statement, you know, years and years ago, which bull markets are born on pessimism, grow on skepticism, mature on optimism, and die on euphoria. I can tell you from where I sit, I don't see euphoria. Uh, I don't see everybody wanting to get into the stock market. I don't see lots of new books coming out. I don't see my email full of people wanting to put all their life savings into uh, the stock market. In fact, I see quite the contrary. I could see a lot of skepticism and a lot of people um, are actually betting for the markets to go down. Now this is interesting, this is IG index, and what you can do on IG, you can actually see what customers are doing, and they call it Wall Street because it's a copyright issue. And right now when I did this snapshot, um, which was literally just the other day, 85% of customers are actually short, so they're betting for the market to go down. Um, now normally that acts as a good contraindicator, um, because, you know, when everyone's expecting something, normally you get the opposite. So overall, whilst, yes, stock markets have moved to new all-time highs, I don't see a huge bullish sentiment. 
Now Warren Buffett, and you can actually download his letters free off the internet, the Berkshire Hathaway shareholders letter, and this comes from the March one, and he said for 240 years it's been a terrible mistake to bet against America, and now is no time to start, and I absolutely agree with him. A lot of people that have been betting on the end of the world crashes uh, have never made money. Yes, we can make money from going short, from betting things to go down, but overall, you know, markets have gone up over the years, um, and it's been a bad idea to bet against America. Um, now, interesting, this is Berkshire Hathaway, which is um, the company which Warren Buffett owns, involved in various uh, companies and has stakes in various companies, including Heinz, um, but has a lot of financials, um, a lot of insurance, financials, banks. And although uh, Buffett actually backed Clinton, he's done very, very well off. Um, Trump so far because Trump is quite pro banks he's much easier uh, on regulation whereas Obama was always very very tough against the banks he doesn't like the banks anyway there's a stock to have a look at which uh, as I say has done quite well the last few weeks uh, and is quite well set up to do quite well in 2017 and that's the holding companies Berkshire Hathaway now seasonally we are just going into the stronger period now if you haven't seen seasonality before let me just give you a quick little explanation and what this chart has done it's broken down from um, over various periods but it's broken down odd and even years and you're probably thinking well Vince what's the point of that well even years as we have been in 2016 are election years or midterm election years so you know we've got over and done with now we won't have a midterm election now for another two years and I'm always talking about the states here uh, it's the US markets so this is what markets tend to do in even years and this is what they do in odd years and overall odd years actually do better than even years and part of the reason for that is uncertainty markets don't like uncertainty and obviously elections create uncertainty but if you look here what happens once you get the election out of the way you tend to get a relief rally uh, and that's definitely what we saw in November in the US now this is roughly depending when you're watching this we're around day 231 you know there's, a, there's about another 15 or 16 days trading days left of 2016 and if you have, have a look here sort of December tends to be bullish and then we carry on through to the new year and then we sort of go into the quieter sort of May period through the summer months uh, and the old saying you know selling May and go away there's a bit of truth to that as well um, let me show it to you slightly diced and sliced in a different way so if we take November December January February uh, March and April they tend to be the top months of the year and then May through to October tend to be the weak months and this is the difference between investing in the strong months or investing in the weak months and you can see there's a huge difference um, so gains are not evenly distributed throughout the year now of course there's always opportunities to make money from things going up and down uh, and the system that I teach and in my package um, you know will cover that so it's not a case that, oh we can only make money from things going up but there is definitely a seasonal bias in the stock market now going a little bit shorter term obviously you're watching this in December uh, this is the last 25 years of December's so day zero is obviously the first day of December day 21 is the last there's around 21 trading days in the month once you take out the weekends holidays uh, and if you what happens with December it tends to be a little bit slow at the start of the month and then starts to do better towards the end of the month and what some people call the Santa Claus rally um, people tend to be slightly better mood bit of sort of like squaring up for the year end but on the whole markets tend to do better the end of December and it tends to be a bullish month about an average up about one and a half percent for the month but it tends to come towards the end of the December not the start of December so that's something to have a look at so we've got a few more days left obviously of 2016 if you're thinking of getting into making money uh, from financial markets then now's a great time to start rather than wait until 2017 you know you can start now get the package start learning make a few trades um, start with a virtual account now everything I do and what I teach you it's not day trading we don't have to watch your screen all day you can do this in sort of 15 20 minutes a day sometimes even less do it on your phone do it with an iPad um, you know if you've got a daytime job that's fine again a lot of the markets that I trade are US markets they're open till nine o'clock at night UK time uh, 10 o'clock Europe and in fact most markets now are open 24 hours a day you can place orders so don't worry if you think oh how can I do this you know I'm busy uh, I'm working I'm studying I'm doing something else um, you know you can work it around your lifestyle 
Now, one thing about me, which is different to a lot of people that teach trading, I'm ready for all eventualities. I've done this for 31 years now, and believe me, I've seen quite a bit in those times. So rather than just make money from markets going up, which is what most people do, I can make money from markets going down. I can even make money from quiet markets, or so markets going sideways, and I can also make money from volatility as well. So it's not a case that um, you know I can only make money when things are going up. Now, 2016 say it's been a very, very good year. Um, most of my money is actually based in US dollars. So when I trade, I trade US stocks in US dollars. Now, a lot of UK clients who've done the same and they've had spread betting accounts uh, don denominated in US dollars, they've had a bit of a bonus this year. And I'm not saying you're going to get it again next year, but they've also made money off the FX because, as you probably know, the pound uh, has weakened significantly against the US dollar. Not only have they made money from their US stocks, they've also made money when you come back into pounds um, and it's around 15%, so they've had a bit of, bo of a bonus. Now, the way we've made money in 2016 is by being long and short, a bit of a pick and mix market. And I always think of it, you know, when you go to cinema and you see these suites of pick and mix, that's the way we make our money. And I think that's going to be the same sort of thing for 2017. It won't necessarily be one stock or sector where you'll make your money, it'll be by sort of picking and mixing. Uh, this is the S&P 500, so every stock in here is in the S&P 500, all big shares, you can go long or short all of these shares. Now the S&P 500 index, as I'm recording this, is up around 7.5-8%, okay, but not you know spectacular. Um, but then if we look at individual stocks, for instance NVIDIA, which is a chip stock, that's up 180%, uh, FCX, which is Freeport, McMoran, Copper and Metals, uh, that's up 135%. Now, of course, we can make money on shorts as well. Um, and First Solar and Endo, for instance, are down 50%. Uh, and in fact, I'll show you a stock which is down 80% in a moment. So we can make money from individual shares rather than just thinking about the indices. A lot of new traders concentrate on the Dow or the FTSE uh, and don't realize there's actually much, much better opportunities underneath the surface in stocks. Now, this is a UK stock, um, which was a fairly small stock, which has done really, really well. Um, it's called Boohoo.com. It's a sort of um, fast fashion, um, you know, aimed at the younger market. And again, internet uh, or internet business. And that's uh, up around 225%, been a very, very nice trend. Glencore, which uh, is a mining stock, had done terribly the last few years, but has made a good turnaround in 2016. That's also up around 200% as well. On the downside, what I was just talking about earlier, this is a company called Valiant, which again had done very, very well, but has had a shocking year in 2016, may actually recover a little bit in 2017. And that's the nice thing, we can trade markets to go up or stocks to go up and down, uh, not just necessarily one way, but Valiant was actually down 84% as I'm recording this uh, in 2016. Um, a lot has gone wrong for that company. But of course, you know, we can also look to make money on recoveries as well. Now these are sectors, and sectors are like a halfway house between trading individual stocks and trading the whole S&P 500. And like I've said, the whole S&P, when I did this snapshot, is up 6.75%. But if you look at individual sectors, you can see energy is up 17%, financial is up 14%, there's a couple of down sectors as well. And they're very easy to spread bet, um, and I know you can spread bet these with IG index, for example, because... Um, I helped to get those set up with IG. And this is the financial sector. So you can go long or short a basket of financial stocks all in one trade. So as I say, it's a bit of a halfway house. Rather than just trading Bank of America or uh, just one stock like Goldman Sachs, you actually can trade the basket. And you can also say be long one sector, so financials, short another sector, consumer staples or utilities. Um, and again, rather than just trade the whole index. Now, I think 2017, watch some commodities. Um, I did very, very well. And if you read or Google me back in 2003, 2004, um, I made quite a few million out of commodities. Um, from about 2007, 2008, I've probably focused more on US stocks, but I'm starting to see more opportunities in commodities as well. So um, take note of commodities in 2017. Casino stocks have done well in 2016, and uh, again, this is from my article, and say so I, I gave you a link to that earlier. If you would said to me a couple of years ago the new president would uh, be somebody who's been in the casino business, I would have said you're joking, aren't you? Uh, but Trump is going to be fairly good for the entertainment casino property business because obviously he's been involved in that. Um, and in fact, the two big names in Vegas, Steve Wynn and Sheldon Adelson, 
uh, which is Las Vegas Sands, they were both backers of Trump and are both sort of Trump friends. So Vegas is going to do quite well. Casinos, uh, regulation-wise, um, it's not bad having Trump as your friend. Now this is Las Vegas Sands, uh, but don't be mistaken by the name. They actually have exposure to Singapore, which is the Marina Bay Sands, which is this place here, uh, which is a lovely hotel and casino. And uh, the Venetian, which there's a Venetian in Macau and in Vegas. Um, so this stock's up around 50% in 2016. I think you can do probably another 30% in 2017. So have a look at Las Vegas Sands as a trading idea. Now small cap sh shares, I tend to trade mainly US small caps, which tend to be bigger than the UK ones anyway. Um, but I think that you've, you know, 2016, there was less deals than 2015 with the uncertainty of the election. But I think we can expect that again uh, in 2017. So the little dogs get bought out by the big dogs, especially biotech and pharmaceutical companies. And let me tell you why that looks quite good. There's a lot of companies with large cash balances. And okay, they can give that cash back to shareholders, they can invest the, the money into the business. But what a lot of these companies will do, they'll use that money to buy out other companies. Now this is a list of the best performing uh, smaller cap shares in uh, 2016 when I did it and you see it's some big big gains here now of course this has been higher risk but of course you manage that risk you don't put all your money into some small internet stock or small biotech stock and in fact it's been mining and oil and gas shares which have predominantly done very very well in 2016 now if you followed any of my work and again you can read this article so again this this is public um, People are living longer, you know, if you look at any of the studies and science, um, you know, which is great, you know, it's great, we're all living longer. Um, but the problem is a lot of people are not factoring that in when it comes to retirement or managing their money. There's a lot of people sitting in cash. As you know, cash is paying near nothing. I don't see interest rates going up a lot in the next year or two. Yeah, they might go up a quarter here and there. Um, but, you know, realistically, interest rates are staying low. So you've got to think about sort of investing your money smarter. This was a study done by BlackRock, and basically what it showed, and I see this a lot with the people that I deal with, um, they have a lot of money in cash. They might have invested a little bit in the stock market, but not enough to actually make a you know realistic return. So if they've got 80% in cash doing nothing, the 20% that's invested in the stock market, it can't cover all that amount of money that's not invested um, and that's what you find with a lot of accounts so I don't know about your situation but I guess like many you're probably holding more cash than probably you should be and that cash should be put to work and I understand people are worried about risk and of course I can help you manage risk it doesn't all have to go into risky investments um, but realistically you know you've got to make that money work harder now this is the power of compounding you know people say how did I become wealthy well, it's through time and compounding. You know, I, I wasn't born rich. I didn't start with a huge fortune. I built it up. And this is interesting. This is the S&P 500. And if you take $10,000 and you'd invested it back in the 70s and reinvested, so you would reinvest it any dividends, uh, you'd be sitting on 900000 If you hadn't, i.e. if you'd taken all your profits out and all your dividends out, you'd be sitting on 228. Still a decent number, but you can see there's a big difference. So that's a very very good way for you to build up to compound your profits now if you want to go further say this is just you know an overview to give you a few ideas um, I was just getting the making money from financial spread trading package I know we're coming towards the end of the year but um, it'd be a good time to buy it maybe you've got a little bit more time over Christmas uh, you can study through it you can start with a virtual account now this can be used for share dealing so it doesn't if you don't want to use spread betting or CFDs you don't have to you can use it for your ISA or just normal share dealing it can be used for FX can be used for CFDs if especially those in Europe um, it's easy to follow it's workbook it's DVDs it's a member site you get support if you're stuck you can contact me if you've ever emailed me you know I come back to you unlike most um, I'm down to earth you know I don't have any airs and graces even though I've done well it's a clear buy and sell system so there's no like um, oh should I do this should I do that it's pretty specific you can do everything in say less than 20 minutes a day you don't have to watch screens all day um, you can read more on this on video clips and testimonials if you have a look at winonmarkets.net and I say it comes with a 100% money back guarantee um, now I know this time of the year as I say we're getting close to Christmas probably you're watching this and people thinking oh, I've got to buy gear so money's tight and all the rest of it oh, I don't really want to spend money on buying a package to trade well think about this you know 
you've got to invest in yourself. You know, most people spend money on things that rust, rot, and depreciate. And I don't want to be a killjoy. Yeah, buy some nice things. But there's a lot of people that spend money on clothes and all sorts of gadgets and all sorts of things. But that's great. That you know, that's spent money. Whereas if you invest money on education and learning tools, then you know, if you do it correctly, you're going to make more money. And then you can buy your your gadgets or your clothes or whatever you want to buy um, with that money. So I hope that makes sense to you. So really, you know, think about investing. Um, on yourself. Now, this is a little story, and there's been some variations, but you can read it here. And I think it, it does sum it up. And some people sometimes think, oh, you know, why should I pay this guy a couple of hundred quid for this package? I can get it all free off the internet. Well, truthfully, you can't get it all free off the internet. Um, if you could, then people wouldn't buy it off me. And, um, you know, the truth is, you're buying a lot of experience. You're not just buying a couple of DVDs and a little, you know, a few pieces of paper. Um, and it's the same here, you know, where the electrician comes along. He knows which screw to turn. It only takes him a minute or so. But, you know, the value is is not just turning the screw. It's knowing which uh, screw to turn. So that's where, you know, my experience comes. And that's, you know, if, if you're an electrician or a plumber or whatever, you know, your experience uh, comes in the time that you've learned that industry, you've learned the business, and you know what you're doing as such. So that's really where your value comes in. All right, with that, if you've got any questions, feel free to email me. Say it's vince at finbets.com. If you want to learn more, have a look. There's my blog there. There's uh, information. There's a couple of video clips, a few updates. Have a look at uh, www.winonmarkets.net. Um, if, if you don't contact me or I don't contact you before, I'll wish you season's greeting and wishing you a happy, healthy, and prosperous new year. Thanks for watching.